right, High Rollers, today, the voice of poker in America. Yes! But first, today's chat on High Roller Radio brought to you by our friends at VegasTopDogs.com, Tony K and Company, America's number one handicappers. They pick winners, folks. Well, I'm a huge fan of this guy. He's the straight man, if you will, to Norman Chad's funny. What a career in the broadcast booth. He's compiled a resume that is just stunning. K1 Kickboxing, Pride, Billiards. You've heard him do Strike Force and NBC PBA Bowling. I think he's even broadcasted Scrabble. I've got to ask him about that. But, of course, he is most famous, at least among this crowd, for his outstanding coverage of the World Series of Poker on ESPN. Oh, did he hit it big when Moneymaker survived Farha. And there he was, front row seat, with his headphones on, just smiling, I'm sure, because poker was about to explode, and he had the best view in the house and still does. Lon McCarran, our guest today. Lon, welcome to the show. Joe, thanks for being a high roller, man. Hey, great to be here. I think I'm an officially a high roller now because I have my first cash as of this last weekend in a World Series of Poker Circuit event. I'm just going to get that out there right at the No way. kidding, because I, I looked on Google Images, you know, building this website, creating a page for you, and I see that you're at the poker table. I was going to ask you about that. So you're getting quite good. Is it from talking to Norman or is it from watching the pros? <laughs> no. Uh, the last place I go for poker advice is, is Norman. <laughs> I, I, I think it's, uh, you know, 12, 13 years of osmosis, and uh, you can learn to do anything. Uh, and, and a lot of non-caches, as you know, that's the best way to learn. It, it, you can take lessons, but uh, the best and, and probably most expensive way to learn poker is just to keep playing and keep losing. And I just happened to have a nice little run up at Lake Tahoe at the World Series of Poker Circuit this last week, and uh, it was the first of three events I was going to enter, uh, and uh, luckily never had to enter the other two because the first one uh, I entered, uh, final table, and finished up fourth. Well, congratulations, man. I know that first cash, that sticks with you forever. Oh, yeah. You should see the walls here in my office. Uh, it's already covered with every hand. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the event? Uh, what were the stakes? And, and how do you feel you played overall? Uh, the event was, was just the World Series of Poker Circuit stop in Lake Tahoe at Harvey's, uh, which was uh, newly convenient uh, for me. Uh, my wife and I moved up uh, to this area. It took about, about an hour and a half drive from the casino from Nevada, South, South Lake Tahoe, where we live now, so it was very convenient. Um, I'm hooked up with a, a group starting a new poker magazine, Two Pair Magazine is what it's called, the first issue coming out next week. I'm their cover boy for November. Uh, they're also starting a poker tour, of, and that's my connection. They've, they've named me the ambassador of their poker tours, uh, which is just Central California, uh, Fresno on up to Reno, and maybe a Bay Area stop. And uh, they're just trying to bring the regional community together, and that's really what was dovetailed very well into my goal of being part of the community that I live in, and uh, why not the poker community? So we had the team up there, and uh, they've done very well. And... Uh, I final tabled the, the first event was a 365 buy-in. It was a it was a re-entry event, which uh, I just was able to fire one bullet, which was nice. And uh, it was a huge field, like 537. Wow! Players, and uh, fourth place paid almost 12 grand, so that was that was perfect. For nice job, Lon McCarran. Way to go! Hey, listen, give us the name of the magazine again because I'm going to drop your resume. And don't worry, I handle rejection well. But what is it again? Two Pair Magazine. Two and, Pair Magazine. Yep, it, it, it's just going to be a regional thing. Uh, I'm not sure how big a uh, web presence they will have. i uh, got to check that out. But uh, you can see the cover on my uh, fan page, Facebook page, and uh, we'll get a link to it on my website as well, lonmccarran.com. And, uh, you know, they're, they're just trying to, you know, make things right and bring the poker community together here in Northern California, and I really applaud them for that. Well, absolutely, and I do wish you luck with that because I'm a poker junkie, true to heart, and anything good for poker, I'm a fan of. So, speaking of good for poker, how about this upcoming event in just a few days? It really is Poker's Marquee Showdown. The Penn and Teller Theater will just be a buzz for this November 9. How does Lon McCarran prepare for this wonderful event, the circus that is known as this final table of the main event? You know, it, it's just a matter of having some perspective on, on what's happening, bringing that perspective uh, 
to the viewers uh, on how big an event this is for these final nine players, for their family, for their friends, for everyone who's going to be at the Penn & Teller Theater. And uh, it just seems to get better every year. We get a little more history. It, you know, every year, of course, is, is different. And so we have um, more empirical evidence to draw upon and uh, more things to talk about. Uh, the team of, of myself, Norman Chad, Antonio S. Van Diaria, I, I think just get better working together each year. Uh, as far as preparation, you know, we, we've been following these players uh, throughout the main event, throughout the, uh, even though it was only, you know, seven days for them, it, it's been uh, several months for us in preparation of the shows, in preparation of each week. And, and so we've hopefully come to know them well, relayed a lot of that information to the audience. And right now it's just a matter of seeing what they've been up to in the last four months, seeing uh, where they've been playing, how they're feeling, uh, and, you know, they're, they're connecting well with each other. So it, it's just, you know, fleshing it out, bringing the story together, and hopefully, uh, you know, presenting the exciting action as accurately as possible. Well, I do want to applaud you and Norman, and great pickup, by the way, with Antonio and the whole ESPN crew, because you guys really set a benchmark for poker coverage. I mean, poker exploded. The uh, TV market got saturated. I know you won't say anything disparaging about other networks because there is a lot of good programming out there, but nothing tops the ESPN coverage. It simply is the best. So congrats on that. I want to ask you, are you happy J.C. Tran is there? I mean, we're talking about a big-name pro. doesn't always happen these days with these incredible field sizes. No, and, you know, J.C. making it was kind of a, a given, and, and so, I, unfortunately, I think we kind of overlooked him at first. Maybe the shock of, of Carlos Mortensen going out of 10th place uh, overshadowed that, and, you know, we were so hoping for Carlos to be there to have a former main event. That would have been great, man. And, and I think the fact that he went out and the, and the whole disappointment in that um, kind of overshadowed J.C. Tran, which I think J.C.'s fine with. You know, J.C.'s not the one who prefers to be in the limelight. I think he's okay with that. He's, a, he, he's already a terrific poker ambassador uh, for the game and for other players, counseling other players. So he, he's one of the seasoned vets out there. And uh, because he hasn't been as active, as successful uh, in the last few years, he's kind of been a, an under-the-radar kind of guy. Uh, but I think this is going to change all of that. Uh, I, I really think that you know, the stories that he brings, the career that he's had, and the skills that he will, you know, display at the table will make him a, a, a huge star. Well, you said it exactly right on. Phil Helmuth's one of those guys that out for the spotlight. J.C. Tran, you give him some chips, and he's out to take care of business. Hey, i got to ask you, in 03, when everyone saying Farha would come back and beat the kid, just too experienced. I remember Dan Harrington saying that. Did you have a sense then of what was about to happen? I mean, this epic rise of this game that we all love right into the mainstream. Not at all, honestly. Uh, and, and to be truthful, you know, my eyes were so wide open the whole time because that was my first venture uh, to a live final table. I had done the final table the year before for ESPN with Gabe Kaplan. Uh, when Robert Varconi won, and uh, as a sideline, I don't think Robert gets enough credit for bringing more people uh, into the 03 World Series. I mean, his performance as an amateur uh, and, you know, what he did to all those pros, I think, deserves a lot of credit for bringing more people into the 03 event, making it as big as it was. But that being said, I wasn't there at the event live, uh, just the way it fell out. So coming into 03, I was, you know, I was still just kind of slack-jawed and wide-eyed at what was going on, trying to understand uh, the dynamics, trying to understand the people. Uh, you know, I knew Moneymaker was a newcomer, but I, I didn't know much about Farha at the time. So, no, it, it, as it, as we produced the shows, I certainly knew, you know, in retrospect what was going on and how big it was going to be, and we were, so we had that luxury because we're voicing it later on. Yeah, you knew you had something good while it was being edited and put together. You just had a feeling that it was just happening, that this was, hey, this is good. Well, we knew, I mean, we, we knew how uh, uh, unique it was to have this guy come in and, you know, 
spend the $39 and then went $2.5 million. And we knew that the other players he was taking out were, were big players. And, uh, but what we didn't know is the, you know, the fallout from his victory, what was going to happen. And uh, it was just quirky. You know, I, I ran into a, a CBS producer that I had worked with before who was only there because his name was Moneymaker. And, you know, they intended to cover him for a couple of days and then go away. But they, you know, they never went away because neither did Chris. So <laughs> the, the fallout was, was totally unexpected. Uh, and it's been a magic ride since. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you talked about getting a sense of what was happening. What was your poker experience before the Varconi win? And a side question to that, what do you make of the sums of money that these guys are playing for, not just in the tournaments, but in the side games? Have you gotten used to that yet? I mean, it's staggering, isn't it? It is staggering, yeah. Um, and uh, the first part of your question about 03, I'm sorry. Yeah, how much experience did you have with poker before the Varconi win? Yeah, none, really. I mean, I had played just here and there, and, you know, nickel and diamond it, and just played five-card draw, and, but uh, I was not in the game at all. Uh, the only reason I was brought in is because I was, uh, you know, one of the freelance ESPN announcers uh, that would take gigs that the staff uh, did not do, the ESPN staff. Uh, so they're, that's a normal course of business with them. And uh, as you mentioned, I did a lot of billiard shows, X Games, Scrabble, as you mentioned as well. So, but it just poker was one of those gigs for me as a freelancer uh, that they just handed out to me and. You know, uh, it was lucky I was hooked onto it, and what happened? It could have been anybody else. Um, so there was no. I was just a TV guy. I was a good TV guy that could get you to break, get you out of break, and call the action. Well, listen. On the topic of poker and the epic rise, I mean, when you talk about the PBA, I know it's got national following and national sponsorship, and it's a pretty big sport. You look at darts in England; that's on an epic rise itself. Uh, what makes poker so different that it really just boomed? I do think, and you mentioned it, uh, the money, um, and uh, the money is staggering. Uh, but again, it's it's you know ten grand at a time for the players, and I, I commend the World Series for not having raised the the main event buy-in. So the more people you get, of course, the bigger the bigger pools, the bigger pools, the the bigger side games are going to be. So it's just a natural progression. But um, it is, uh, you know, it you have to just. You know, play with the money that you got. You know, <laughs> and it, it, it's a natural progression of things. And uh, I, I can't. You know, we fluctuate as far as the size of the main event field. Uh, is, yeah, it's been down a little bit the last few years, but uh, overall, you know, it's remained pretty consistent. Uh, it's going to go up and down based on what's going on in people's home lives or whatever. But uh, when U.S. poker, online poker comes back, we're going to see big fields. Uh, even bigger than we're seeing now. If a woman makes the final table, which we've come so very close, so it's going to happen soon. You might have a, a female poker boom. Uh, and so I think poker's best days are ahead. Well, absolutely. Let's hope so. I really like your optimism there. Norman Chad, have you guys always... First of all, what kind of guy is he? Is the guy we see on TV and listen to, is that really Norman Chad? Is he really that guy? And have you always had good chemistry with him? Because you guys have excellent chemistry. Yeah, what you see with Norman is pretty much what you get. It's even a little more extrovert than uh, than he is in, in real life. He'd rather avoid crowds. He gets along with animals better than people, he would tell you. Really? Uh, his, uh, he, he, he'd rather just not, you know, get out there and be in the big party. He's fine one-on-one. -on -one. He's, he's one of the smartest people I know. Uh, journalistically, um, has so much integrity. Uh, and, and it's a joy to be around him. He's a, I think he's the backbone of our shows on, on the direction we take, the right choices we make journalistically. Um, and he's always about telling the truth, and, and that's, you know, his newspaper background. And, as, you know, it goes hand in hand with, with what I'm looking to do, too. And uh, I, I was a fan of his actually before we worked together, before we met. He wrote a syndicated column, still does, weekly. Um, and it was an NFL picks column back in uh, 02 when I was reading him in my San Jose, California newspaper and would just laugh every Friday morning would come out. So I was a big fan of his sense of humor, uh, his, his cynicism, his biting sarcasm. And so I was thrilled to learn that we were going to be working together. And I was, I was in awe of him. And I learned so much from him uh, about 
the presentation of event and certainly about poker. Um, and so we just seem to click. You know, he's got his role, I've got my role. We have different uh, senses of humor, but still they, they're, they're parallel. Um, and it, whatever we were doing, you know, what I try to do with any partner is, is to make them comfortable, to make them look good, to have fun with it, uh, and but on top of all, uh, is is get it right and have integrity. And so all of our goals really matched each other's, and it was just a you know one of those things that fell together and it felt right. By the way, uh, personal opinion here: the 2006 opening of the final table, that's the year Jamie Gold won. Uh, that was, I think it was two minutes and two seconds a pre-produced opening. Uh, who's next? One of the best openings in sports history. Oh, yeah. In my personal opinion, that was so well done. Listen, I know we're coming up on the 20-minute mark. I've got two more questions. You've covered a lot of sports. Uh, where does a superstar poker player rank in celebrity with, cele- with, say, a football player or a hockey player these days? Oh, boy. Uh, I, I'm not sure they do, honestly. Uh, you've got the rare player uh, like Chris Moneymaker uh, who – you know, he, he has his niche. People may know Moneymaker just because it was such a big thing at the time. Uh, of course, his, his celebrity all stems from that. So he doesn't have a, a lasting flow of, of accomplishments of, of celebrity. He just has that bright burst that is still burning bright. And then you've got you know, Phil Ivey, who is the, the poker superstar of the, the poker world. Um, and anybody who's in poker knows Phil Ivey, respects Phil Ivey until he's the best player around. Then you've got your Phil Helmuth, who has some crossover value. Uh, he gets himself out there, promotes himself, uh, puts himself in positions where he's working with people who are not in the poker community, charity events, uh, Super Bowls, NASCARs. He's in the, you know, down in the lower seats at the uh, Golden State Warrior Games. So he is just because of his personality, because of his opportunities, because of his bankroll and, and success, he has some, uh, and maybe the only crossover ability, I think, of any of the field. So um, as, if you put Phil Hamuth next to, uh, you know, the starting left guard for the Cleveland Browns somewhere in the Midwest, it, I think the football players are probably going to draw a bigger crowd. But, uh, Phil does wonderful, wonderful things for the game. For our listeners, Lon, who have not uh, had the chance or the opportunity to get to this vaunted event, can you describe for us the atmosphere? I mean, by the way, I just interviewed Greg Raymer and Thomas McAvoy, lucky to have two world champions on the show, and I was asking uh, Tom how the Hall of Fame capped his career, and he says, well, it's certainly icing on the cake, but nothing can top winning the main event. So with that in mind, how do you describe the atmosphere for our listeners who have not been there? What's going to happen at the Penn & Teller Theater over the next week? I mean, it's so exciting. Well, yeah, absolutely. And, and even the, as exciting as it was for, for Tom and, and Greg, they did not have uh, the Penn & Teller Theater to play in. Uh, the game just continued on, uh, maybe a day off. Uh, I think with Raymer, we, we took a day off and had to move location. But um, it, is, uh, it, it is so different from uh, what they experienced. Uh, it, it's, it's incredible because you've got a house uh, built for theater, of course, is what it is. And then you've got it filled with people, every one of them who have a rooting interest in at least one of the nine players. So anytime something happens at the table, you are going to have that group of defeated players and that group of of players who have just become victorious. And so everything that happens, uh, every bet, every fold, every pot drag, uh, it just creates such excitement, and it keeps everyone on edge. It lifts up everyone. It helps us. Uh, stay in focus and stay in tune and stay excited throughout the many hours of our broadcast. Uh, and it, it is so infectious and so unique in the game. And that's what's fun. I mean, that you don't see this anywhere else in poker. It only happens once a year. And anytime you get that type of, of event, that's just one time on the calendar, uh, it is a Super Bowl. It is a Super Bowl of poker. And it, it just. Uh, everyone reacts that way to it. Oh, man, do we appreciate your time today. Lon McCarran, ESPN, the voice 
of poker in America, the straight man to Norman Chad's funny. Listen, real quick, it's lawnmccarran.com. And can you tell us, uh, good luck, by the way, with the whole crew at ESPN. What happens for America? What can, what can they tune into here? Monday night, uh, we will be on the air at 5 o'clock uh, Pacific time on ESPN2 uh, with the start of the final table, uh, and of course, 8 Eastern. And then an hour later on Tuesday, we'll finish it up, and we'll go as late as we need to on Monday uh, on ESPN2. And then on Tuesday, we're on the flagship ESPN, 6 o'clock Pacific time, 9 Eastern, and uh, we'll crown a new world champion. And if, if people have trouble, spell, I, I always tell people Norman Chad has four times as many Twitter followers because like Norman Chad's so easy to spell <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter. You know, it's, it's more difficult. But you got to go at Lon McCarran to Twitter. The website is lonmccarran.com. You can spell it for him off the air. But if, if you have trouble with that, you can do lonpoker.com, and that'll get you to my website as well. Listen, buddy, thanks so much for your time today. Good luck with the main event. Are you allowed to make predictions? Uh, I, I, I sure I'm allowed, but we don't. You know, <laughs> Crapshoot. Uh, I love J.C. Tran. He lives near me, and uh, with as many chips as he have, with the skills he has. But you know, uh, since we've been doing it in the year of the big fields, uh, last you know ten or eleven years, the chip leader, uh, the majority of the time, the chip leader has not won the bracelet. So it's it's tough to go with anybody. Have a good broadcast. Good luck, and thank you so much, Lon McCarran. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Good to be with you.